Hello and welcome to the Pet Portrait Painting Tutorial where you will learn how to paint pets with oil paint. My name is Ashley Bunting and I would love to share with you all of the tips and tricks that I have learned over the years of being a full-time artist. Now the good news is that I am 100% self-taught which means you can do it too. So there's no need to spend thousands of dollars at university just to learn how to paint. And I will share with you everything I know so that we can fast track um, the process of you learning how to paint pet portraits. Learning to paint with oil paint as a beginner can be an overwhelming experience. So I'm here to simplify all that information for you. So over the next few lessons, you will learn about the different brushes and equipment that you will need for um, painting pet portraits. You will learn how to identify colors in a reference photo and then how to actually mix those exact colors. I will also take you through um, different brush strokes and blending techniques as we paint the nose, eyes and the different types of fur on our pet. If you go to your local art shop and take a look around, you will see that there is such a variety of different brushes available. And if you walk around and feel the tips of those brushes, you will see that some are really smooth and some are really coarse. Now, in the beginning of my career, I, I really liked to use the, uh, the synthetic, like softer brushes, and they give your painting that softer airbrush look. But now in my career, as I've advanced more, I actually prefer to use the coarse brushes. If you live in Australia, you might know the brand Art Spectrum. So these are my absolute favorite brushes to use. It's called Art Spectrum Series 1000 Hog Hair. If you don't live in Australia, I'm not really sure what brands they are, but as long as you're using a hog hair brush. So I find the hog hair actually helps me to achieve that fur texture and it helps me to spread the paint on without having to use a linseed oil to like make my paint more liquid or runny. So I really like these brushes and it doesn't really matter what you use, it definitely depends on what style you prefer, I'm just letting you know what I do. So not only are there different types of hairs for your brushes, but there are different types of shapes for your brushes, which can be a bit confusing as well. So the different shapes are round, flat, bright, filbert, fan, angle, mop, and rigger. So despite all these endless possibilities of brushes that you can get, there's actually only five brushes that I like to use for every single painting. So I'll show you them starting from smallest to largest. So the first one is a size zero, like round brush. It's basically just a point, it's really small. The second one is a size one round brush as well, but it's larger than the, the size zero. The third one is a size two filbert brush. The fourth one is a size 4 filbert brush. And the last one I like to use is my largest one and it's a size 10 bright brush. So if you have these five brushes in your kit, you can basically paint anything. So the larger one is perfect for painting backgrounds because you can cover a lot of area fast but it's also good if you're painting those larger pet portraits and you can paint your fur thicker. And the tiny ones are perfect for getting into those little details, like in the eyes and the nose especially, and the rest are perfect for painting different types of fur. So another brush that you may or may not need is a gesso brush. So gesso is a white um, like primer that you paint onto your canvas and you will need to prime your canvas if you're buying a lower quality grade. So I only use gallery quality, so I never need to prime my canvases, but if you are on a budget and would like to use a cheaper quality canvas, you will definitely need to prime it. If you don't prime it, you'll find that the oil from your oil paint actually gets like sucked into the material and it becomes impossible to blend. So I would recommend painting a layer of gesso with your gesso brush sanding it down lightly 
and then painting another layer. So two layers is good. And a gesso brush is just a nice thick cheap brush that you can paint the gesso on with that you don't care too much about. Another really important piece of equipment that you will need is a palette knife. So these are really inexpensive and they're perfect for mixing paint on your palette. I don't like to use brushes to mix my paint because it just wastes my paint because the paint gets stuck all up in the bristles where this will give you a nice clean mixture. Now when it comes to painting palettes there are a few different options out there and I do think that a few artists would disagree with me but I fully stand by these tear off paper palettes. I hate the mess of having to clean up my palette afterwards. Uh, this you can work in many different layers and just tear off as you go. So it's like a book, hang on I can show you here. And the paint just mixes so beautifully on these and when you're done with it, you tear the page and start a new one. They're like only $5, so affordable and I use them all the time. Life savers. Okay, so let's talk about painting mediums. Now if you go to your local art store and you go to the medium aisle, you will see that there are so many different options. Now I will just show you a few that I like to use. When you begin oil painting, you will see that your oil paint is actually quite thick in consistency. So if you would like to, um, how do I say this, make your consistency more liquid and workable for it to flow better, you would add um, refined linseed oil. And this will also slow down the drying period for your painting. If you would like to also make your paint flow better to have the same consistency as the linseed oil, but you're finding that your painting is drying too slowly, then you would add a medium called Liquin Original. Now, Liquin Original actually speeds up the drying time. So I like to use this when painting my signature or the bottom of my painting because I need it to dry in like a day. Taking good care of your paintbrushes is really important for prolonging the lifespan of your brushes. So you don't need to keep popping to the art store to buy more. So after every painting session that I do, I always wash my brushes. A lot of artists will do this differently, but I like to get it done really fast. Otherwise the paint dries like at the base of the brush in the bristles and you find that your brushes start to like fan outwards. So to clean my brushes, I will either rinse take a plastic cup, pour a bit of the refined linseed oil and swish my brush around in that until all the paint is off. You can also use an odorless solvent which will do the exact same thing or you can use a really good um, brush soap but it is a bit more expensive. I do like the brush soap. If you don't have it you can just use the oil or the odorless solvent. So that concludes our first lesson on learning to paint pet portraits. So in the next lesson, we will learn about how to identify colors in a reference photo and then how to mix those colors. See you then. Welcome back to the pet portrait painting tutorial. We are now on lecture two, where we will learn about color identification and color mixing. So before I start any pet portrait, I like to take a long time to stare at the reference photo and try and identify all the different colors in the photograph as well as paying attention to cool tones and warm tones which we will also learn about in this lesson. Take a few minutes to observe your pet photo. Where is the light coming from? What shadows are created? What different tones and values do you see? Observation is an important step before the painting process to ensure that your artwork captures the likeness of your pet. So what exactly are tones and values? Well, value is the lightness or darkness of a color and tones are the variations of the colors found on the color wheel. So if you have a look at the image in front of us, the red is the tone and then you have different values of that same red because it goes from darker to lighter and the same thing with the blue.
colors such as red, yellow, and orange are often referred to as warm colors, while colors such as green, blue, and purple are referred to as cool colors. An easy way to remember this is that red, yellow, and orange evoke the feelings of warmth because it reminds us of a fire. On the other hand, blue, green, and purple evoke the feelings of coolness because it reminds us of water or grass. However, sometimes it is not as simple as that. Have a look at the greens below. The ones on the left are warm, while the ones on the right are cool. The way to determine whether it is warm is to identify if the color has a red, orange, or yellow undertone. If the color were cool, it would have a blue or purple undertone. Let's talk about highlights, midtones, and shadows. These are terms used to describe the different tonal values in an image. Highlights are the brightest values that are more exposed to light, shadows are the darker values where light is obscured, and midtones are the lit areas between the two. There are nine colors that I would recommend that everyone has. It's titanium white, lamp black, burnt umber, raw umber, sap green, yellow ochre, red, blue, and yellow. I will now begin to demonstrate how I lay out my colors and begin to mix them on my palette. But if you have a look at the PDF available, you will see that I've attached a few different um, color recipes for the types of furs um, that you'll find for common pets. So I like to lay out all of my colors in a row at the top of the palette, and these are the colors that I will be using. As I mix my colors, I like to mix them from darkest to lightest. So I'll start with the darkest color and place it at the top of the palette and I'll make my way through the lighter values um, below that. So they're basically in order. So this just helps to keep the palette nice and neat. I always use a palette knife to mix my paint. I never use a paintbrush to mix it and you'll see me scraping the bottom of the palette quite often. This is to make sure that we mix all of the pigment together because often a time we, we will leave paint unmixed at the bottom of that color. So we want to make sure that we scoop it all up and mix it again. So for the rest of the video, you will just see how I mix all of my colors and order them according to their tonal values and the technique I use to mix it with the palette knife.
So I like to paint the finer details such as the collars, nose and eyes first before I do the fur. And this is because the fur will normally overlap with these things. So I like to work in layers. So let's get started. When painting the nose, I prefer to work from my darkest colours to my lightest colours. So right now I have my size 1 round brush in the lamp black shade, which is my darkest colour, which goes in the nostrils and around the nose. Importantly, I'm not using too much paint. I'm just using enough to cover the surface of the canvas. If you use too much, you will run into some blending problems later on. Now that I'm finished with my darkest colour, which is the lamp black, I'm moving on to a slightly lighter colour, which is a charcoal colour, so it's lamp black mixed with a bit of titanium white. Now it doesn't look like there's much of a difference in these colours, but there is. The key um, to mixing your colours and applying them is to work in subtle changes. You don't want drastic changes, otherwise you will have blending problems. So I know where to apply these colours because I have the reference photo of the pet's nose right next to me. And you can see how I've left a little gap under the nostril. I've left that gap because I need a lighter color to go there. I'm now moving on to a slightly lighter colour, which is lamp black mixed with even more titanium white than our previous colour had. Because I don't have a lot of paint on my paintbrush when applying the colours to the canvas, it's easy to blend as we go along. So I use um, crisscrossing tiny little brush strokes, which actually begins to blend the edges of the two colours together as I apply the paint. I want to blend out that highlight on the nose a bit more, so I'll now go in with my size 2 filbert brush, which is dry, there is absolutely no paint on it, and I will lightly go over the edges of the paint and will begin to blend together. It gives you that airbrushed look. Over here I've decided to add a little bit more of a highlight, so I'm using my size 1 round brush with the lightest grey colour and I'm lightly dabbing on the nose to create those little dotty highlights that appear on a pet's nose.
just like we did with the nose, I like to start with my darkest colours and work my way to my lightest colours. So my first step is to use my um, tiniest brush, it's the size 0 round brush, and outline the eyes with my darkest colour, which is lamp black. Once I'm finished with the outline of the eyes, I will then pick up my size 1 round brush, still using the black paint, and going in all around the eye where I can see the black colour, so I keep looking at my reference photo. Once I'm finished with my darkest colour, I will then move on to the color that's slightly lighter. So this color is lamp black mixed with a bit of raw umber. You will see that there's a really subtle difference between the two colors that I've just used. That's because I want to make the eye, the colors of the eye flow and not to create any drastic changes. Another important tip is to only use enough paint to cover the surface of the canvas. You don't want to overload your paintbrush, otherwise you will have blending issues. Paint is so much easier to blend when there's not a lot of it. Since eyeballs are round and wet, when we're painting our pet's eyes, we want to avoid our eyes looking flat and dry. So this is why I'm adding a slightly lighter brown color around the edges of the eyes, and this helps the eye to actually look round. And you've, you will notice that I've left a little gap for white paint there. This is because I'm going to add a lighter color in there, which is going to make our eye look glossy. So adding the highlights to the eyes is a really important step to making your eyes look realistic. So in this last step, I'm adding um, pure titanium white paint into that little corner of the eye, which is going to make our eye look re really reflective. In this next step, I'm building up the colors of our pet's fur around the eyes. This is because when I go in later to paint the fur, it can sometimes be tricky to try and get around the eye without painting over it, so I'll always just do this first.
I will then repeat this process with the second eye. So I'm working from my darkest colors to the lightest colors. So in this lesson, you will learn about how to apply the different colors in different stages. You will also learn about brush strokes and blending techniques to achieve the fur texture. So let's get started. Since we are painting a three-dimensional animal on a two-dimensional surface, we need to pay attention to our colors and the layers that we apply our colors in to make sure that our pet looks as realistic as possible. To help us achieve more of a 3D effect, we need to pay close attention to the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So I like to start with the shadow colors, which are typically your darkest colors. So if you see in the corner of my ear where the ear um, flaps over, it creates a shadow on the head. So this area is going to be a dark shadow color. And then on the sides of the ears where the ears have folds, we are going to have shadow colors as well. So these will be our darkest areas. So I will now start painting my darkest areas on the ear. I'm using my size 4 filbert brush because my pet portrait is quite a large one. And I'm going in with the darkest color which is lamp black. It's important to note that I'm not using a lot of paint, so I'm not overloading my brush. I'm just using enough to cover the surface of the canvas. When applying our layers, we want to avoid painting straight lines like this. Instead, we want to paint little vertical lines going up in different sizes, and this will help us create that fur texture. So even though over here it looks like I've painted a straight line, but if you see how I did it, I did it in little vertical motions to create the straight line. This is because the edges of this line are now extending out in a fur-like texture. Importantly, you also need to paint in the direction of the grain of your fur. So if the hair is falling downwards, you don't want to paint the hair like side to side.
I'm still adding in all of my shadow colors, but I've moved on to a slightly lighter color. It's quite similar to the black, but it has a little bit of titanium white in it. So the key is to use subtle changes in your colors. You don't want to do any drastic changes. So I'm using this lighter charcoal color to add more of the shadow shadows between the fur. So with this lighter color, I begin building it up against the previous color that I've already laid down using the exact same technique with my brush doing little vertical strokes and I lightly overlap with the previous color. The photo that my client sent me was a bit blurry, but if you have a look in this lighter area, so where our midtones and highlights will be, you will still see that there are shadow colors in little dark strokes. This is because in between the fur, close to the skin, we have our shadows that the fur is casting. So we need to make sure that we're still painting um, little dark lines, even though we'll have our lightest colors there. But between these lines, we leave gaps, and in those gaps, we will add our midtones and our highlights. Now that my shadow colors and the base layer for my ear has been laid in, I will still use my size 4 filbert brush and take a lighter color for my midtones and begin to add this between the gaps in the fur there. And as I'm painting, I'm blending as I'm going. This is only possible because I'm not using a lot of paint on my paintbrush. I'm only using enough to cover the surface of the canvas. So as I paint each stroke on, it blends with the paint around it and you can even keep stroking over the same stroke until it's blended all over. Since I'm painting in the direction of the grain of the fur, one can very easily see that the fur on the ear is pointing downwards in a diagonal line. If I were to paint side to side, this would not look right. Another important thing to note is the length of the fur and the brush strokes. So if you have a medium sized fur like my pet does on the ears, then your brush strokes are going to be not too short, I would say just a medium stroke. If you're working with really short hair, of course your brush strokes would have to be really short. And if you're working with long hair, like we will do later on our pet's beard, your brush strokes will be really long.
I'm now just going back with some darker colors and redoing a bit of those shadows that I might have lost when I painted the lighter colors on. Again, I don't have a lot of paint on my paintbrush. I'm just lightly doing a few strokes to make that shadow more apparent. Now that the first ear is complete, it's time to paint the second ear. I will repeat the exact same process of laying down my shadow colors, my midtones, and then my highlights.
So in this next lesson, we'll be painting the face. So painting the face is quite similar to painting the ears because the fur is a similar length and color to the ears. So I'm starting with my darkest colors as usual, which is lamp black in this case. And I'm being careful not to overload my brush with paint. Importantly, I'm making sure that my brush strokes are the same length as my fur. So the fur on the head is quite short, which means that my brush strokes are going to be short and not long. I'm also making sure to paint in the direction of the grain of the fur. I'm using my size 4 filbert brush to add the shadow colors in. So I'm painting little strokes on the head which is the shadow colors between the fur and I'm leaving gaps in between that to paint the lighter colors later on. So right now I'm using a lighter color than the lamp black, which is black mixed with a tiny bit of titanium white. Once my shadow colors have been laid in, I will still use my size 4 filbert brush, but I'm taking my mid-tone color, which is just a gray color, and I'm adding that in the gaps. So as I paint that color in the gaps, I go over it a few times so it begins to blend around with the shadow colors that are next to it. So I'm blending as I'm painting. Once I'm finished with my shadow colors and my mid-tones, I will then take the lightest color, which is my highlight. And in this case, it's a light gray, so it's black mixed with um, more titanium white. I will then repeat the process of working from my darkest colors to my lightest colors over the rest of the face. So when I start painting around the eyes, the fur becomes much longer than on the top of the head and the ears, which means that my brush strokes need to be longer than before.
I always say to make sure that you're painting in the direction of the grain of the fur. And I think you can really see that when we're painting the beard because we have fur that by the lips it's like tucking under the lips and then we have longer fur over the top that falls over the beard so we have a lot of lengths and um, directions happening here so what you'll see me really focusing on is to making is to make sure that my brush strokes are going in the direction of the fur So right now I'm using my size 4 filbert brush and I'm painting in all of my shadow colours and the darker sort of browns that I can see in my beard. Now when you see white fur it is natural to think that you must use pure white paint but it's actually just an illusion. So we don't want to use any pure white but we're using really light colours and what I'm doing is I'm leaving gaps in between these darker colours where I'm going to paint my lighter colours.
To paint the finer detail of the hair falling over the nose, I will use my size 1 round brush. I took a step back from the painting and could see that I needed to add some darker colours around the eyes. So I've taken my size 4 filbert brush with a little bit of black paint on it and I've lightly re-feathered over the areas under the eyes to make it darker. If you've watched my previous videos, you will know that I work with my darkest colours and move on up to my lightest colours. So I'm using my size 4 filbert brush here, as I did for basically the rest of the painting. And my darkest colour is lamp black. So I'm slowly feathering on this colour, going in the direction of the grain of the fur. I'm also making sure that my brush strokes mimic the length of the fur. So in on the body, the fur is quite long on the sides, which means that my strokes are going to be longer. I've now finished with the darkest colour and have made my way to a slightly lighter colour which is a lamp black mixed with a bit of raw umber and titanium white. So using this colour I'm not afraid to overlap 
a few of the strokes with the black that's just going to help it to blend better and you can see where I'm adding this color where it gets close to the beard I'm trying to get as close as possible and what I will do later when the body is finished is I'll take a clean brush with a bit of that lighter beard color and just um, lightly feather over the body again just to make it blend between the beard and the body. I've now moved on to an even lighter color and I'm making sure that my brush strokes are quite long to mimic the long fur texture and I'm making sure to go in the direction of the grain of the fur. So on the body the fur is making wavy motions which means that my brush strokes are not going to be straight but they're going to make those S shapes.
I'm now doing the last color, which is the lightest color. And as I'm painting this in those gaps that I've left, I'm making sure to blend as we go. So I lightly brush over the edges of these colors and it creates that soft look.
since the beard is coming over the fur of the body I need to actually take a lighter color that's in the beard and repaint over the edge of the beard to come over the fur of the body The very last step is to paint your signature. Instead of using black, try and find a colour that is in your painting. So I've also mixed my paint with a Liquin Original Medium, which will make my paint flow better to paint my name. So we've come to the end of our Pet Portraits painting tutorial. I just want to encourage you that if you are new to painting or you've never painted a pet portrait before, hang in there. Don't be discouraged if you're not happy with the end result of your artwork. I know from experience that you only learn um, the more you do it, or the better you get the more you do it. So practice makes perfect. And if this is something you would like to turn into a career, I'm supporting you the whole way. Please feel free to follow me on Instagram at Ashley Bunting Studio. Send me an, a message and um, let's get in contact and I can give you some advice. So thank you very much. Goodbye.